Thank you, Hugh, and good evening to you. Yes, we're one of the teams that all ends here in West Yorkshire tonight. Nine months of work, you're still down to 90 minutes. Misery guaranteed for one, for the other. The chance to win the golden ticket, only a second trip to Wembley in the 21st century. It's more than 20 years since two sides met in the championship playoffs, who finished further apart than Leeds and Norwich, but they start dead level tonight. The bookies think they're anything but equal, but the 17-point gap between the two is highly significant, and the Canaries' away struggles will more than play a part. But with expectation comes pressure. Leeds form went right off the ball at the end of the season. They have a poor playoff record. They have to make sure they're only playing the opposition and not the occasion tonight. While Leeds United have Ilan Melier in goal, Archie Gray back at right back tonight, Roden alongside Ampadu at centre half, Junior Firpo at left back, Gruen and Kamara in midfield, Yonto, Ruta and Somerville, and Joel Peru up front. To the one change, Sam Byram out with a hip flexor injury. That means that Archie Gray goes back to right back. Now Archie's played a lot of his football as a right back, but what does that take away further up the field when he's there? Yeah, I mean, Archie Gray is a centre midfielder, but I think it just, the, 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 uh, the high said that uh, Parker holds him is that he leaves, sometimes leaves out more experienced players to play him right back. So he just wants him on the pitch and getting involved. But I do, I do think they just need a little bit more going forward, and I think that's why he's put Peru in today. Angus Gunn is in goal for Norwich. It's a back four of Stacey, Duffy, Gibson and Yanou. Sarah, who played up front in the first leg, plays on the right wing tonight. John Rowe on the left. Nunez and McLean in the centre of midfield. And the change is made to get Ashley Barnes back in the side. Barnes has been out of the calf problem for nearly three weeks. He plays tonight. Has to be an element of risk that that is the case. And he partners Josh Sargent up front, likely to play just off in the benches for Leeds Cresswell, Cooper, Anthony Shackleton, James, Gelhart Roberts, Joseph and Darlow for Norwich, Hanley, Boyer Sainz, Van Hoydonk McCallum, Fasnack, Sorensen Bart, Fisher and Long May, playoff nights where seasons are at a crossroads one route leading to Wembley the other into a cul-de-sac ahead of a U-turn where the sat-nav is set for Watford, Plymouth and Portsmouth both Leeds and Norwich know exactly what they're missing. They've got 90 minutes to keep the dream alive. These are the nights for players to make themselves heroes. The nights the fans never forget. The nights Talk Sport was made for. Leeds in all white, kicking from left to right. Norwich yellow shirts and green shorts. And they're defending the Norman Hunter stand away to our right hand side, attacking. The Don Revy stand. Now the ball is through for Gunn, who picks it up inside his penalty area, constantly on the move. He's trotted basically over about two thirds of the blades of grass in that penalty area before dispensing with the ball upfield. Looking for Ashley Barnes, beaten by Ampadu. And Norwich are able to pick it up at the back with Sarah. Uh, the pressure on Norwich with the Leeds press but Peru can't get there ahead of Angus Gunn pump forward this time towards Sargent who's beaten by Roden and it's interesting that Barnes so far trying to isolate himself against Joe Roden as Gruen shepherds the ball back to his goalkeeper and Melier will come out and pick it up a minute in which Norwich have tried to already start frustrating the Leeds United crowd and then by proxy the players as well, Lucy. Yeah, I mean, it, if team success was relied on with the crowd, then Leeds will be top of the Premier League. It doesn't work like that. They've still got to perform. You know, Norwich have got a job to do coming here. It's difficult coming to Ellen Road. But the first thing you do is you don't shy away from the noise and you make sure you try and use the crowd against this Leeds team. And a few teams have done it. They've been frustrated a lot this season, but they've tended to come through. And you know, the juggernaut of the home form has shown that. But this is different gravy tonight. This is, this is right at the top of the Championship. And this is do or die. Well, I was fortunate to be here for the game against Leicester. And I thought that the atmosphere for that game was as good as I've seen Ellen Road for years. I think it's even better tonight. But certainly the welcome that the players were given was uh, on a completely different level. But it's the 22 men on the field rather than the 38,000 here at Ellen Road that have got to try and win the game for their respective sides. Jack Stacey, a player with plenty of playoff experience in the past. 
Taking a throw for Norwich. Thrown forward towards halfway. He looked as though Barnes was given a shove. Got a little bit of contact in his back and went to ground. Jared Gillett, the referee, allows play to continue. And Gruev will play it forward for Leeds, who are still inside their own half here on Talk Sport, where we're a couple of minutes in. Still Leeds nil, Norwich nil. And nil nil on aggregate between the two sides as well after a very sterile first leg which saw only three shots on target between the two teams the Leeds had 60% possession in that game they'll possibly expect even a little bit more than that tonight they've got a free kick here uh, fouled by Nunez on Roden on halfway and Leeds are taking the free kick quickly Kamara working the ball between the legs of Somerville who receives it now from Junior Firpo he'll try and get him past Sara and has done that and he's inside the penalty area towards the edge of the six yard box the angle is tight he fires over the bar first side of goal to Leeds United it's nil-nil with three and a half gone yeah Somerville is the threat isn't he down that left hand side and he manages to come out with the ball in a quick one-two but everything about that was quick and then he needed to slow himself down right at the end to take the shot just didn't really have enough chill in his veins it's a wild shot really I think he might have got a tip as well the goalkeeper he scored a couple of goals at Carrow Road back in October, two of the 20 that he scored this season. Cree Somerville, he is Leeds' top scorer. Angus Gunn, wasting a few seconds before restarting play. And ball very quickly back with Leeds, but inside their own half. That time wasting and match management will be a part of the Norwich tactics tonight. And I'll reiterate my stance on it for what it's worth it is part of the game I would want yep. my side doing exactly the same under those circumstances so I will refer to it happening but it's not a criticism Gun coming out here and claims the ball well and throwing himself at it on the edge of the penalty area you the away side you need to take every potential advantage you can and you need the ball in play for as few minutes as possible absolutely Jim you're, you're completely right uh, Norwich has set up that, so out of possession they're like a 4-4-2 but when they've got it the, the goalkeeper is really brave he tries to encourage the press which he gets from Leeds and I think three times out of three he's played it long so he's trying to dip it into either Sargent or Barnes who are going to be key in terms of the ball sticking tonight because Leeds like to play in the opposition's half Somerville able to turn and he will run at this Norwich City back line and he's found Jorginho Ruta onto his right foot then his left shot came it was blocked easily by Kenny McLean cleared again out towards Ruta on the edge of the Norwich City penalty area worked by Nyonto down the line but couldn't get the angle right and it was easily cut out Norwich now will be able to bring it away from the edge of their own penalty area although a stumble from Rowe just allowed Roden to seize upon it he then plays the ball forward and in doing so is caught by Nunez it was an over hit pass but Nunez caught him late and it's a free kick to Leeds about 7 or 8 yards outside the Norwich City penalty area right of centre yeah well that, exactly how we thought that Leeds would start you know playing up the pitch trying to play in uh, right at the edge of Norwich's box and a couple of times Norwich had an opportunity when they win the ball back that first ball that first pass has to be good there was room on the right they didn't make it and all of a sudden now they've, they've had to foul and conceded a, a set piece not far from the edge of the box well, realistically, it's not quite in a position to shoot. Gruev and Somerville, the two players that stand over this. Gruev towering above the winger, who's got his black gloves on tonight. Somerville runs over the ball. Gruev taking it. Has gone for goal! Oh, brilliant! That is majestic! What a strike from Gruev! Everybody expecting the ball to be teased inside the penalty area. But instead he's worked it past the wall and into the bottom right-hand corner. Gunn saw what was happening, but he couldn't get there in time. Goal is in East Anglia, but leaves the goal up inside six and a half minutes tonight. Yeah, a really clever set piece. It's on the, the right-hand side as we look at it. And the left foot of Gruev, he just sneaks it in. To be fair to Gunn, he wasn't really paying attention. He's shouting at his wall, and he's expecting it like you say. But he doesn't react quick enough. He, you can see him, and maybe the wall's in his way, but that's a really cleverly worked free kick. And it's obviously one of the practice because of the way they're celebrating with the bench. Well, having seen the replay, Gunn lined up a two-man wall. And as we're looking at it, man on the right of the two split early. 
and he's played it round the left of the left-hand man and it's still crept in the near post so whether that means that the wall is in the wrong position I don't know but the bottom line is Leeds lead by a goal to nil and they'll be able to bring the ball forward here with Peru to Gray and then Yonto is tackled but Yanunis concedes a corner and Norwich are really under the cosh eight gone already a goal down on the night and on aggregate yeah this is exactly what Norwich didn't want exactly what Leeds wanted and you know I just think that that teams can get absolutely rolled over by Leeds when they start quickly and get a goal it's about frustrating them but they've got to keep the calm Norwich long way to go Grew have scored from one set piece he takes this corner it's a little flick header at the near post that's cleared it comes back out towards Grew every game looking across the edge of the penalty area for Somerville Somerville back for Nyonto he's gone behind square for Gray deepest line of Leeds outfield players plays it ahead of him to the Finnish international Glenn Kamara and Kamara out towards Junior Firpo on the left Norwich laying a foothold in the game in the opening two three minutes trying to frustrate Leeds but Leeds have really built up ahead of steam and they've got such a good record this season in matches in which they've scored first 22 championship games in which they've taken the lead and they've held on to win 20 of them yeah, which is an outstanding return yeah Jim they're just, it's just not sticky for Norwich as soon as they get the ball they, they first pass out they, they sort of panic in it's not sticking it got to Sargent and then Leeds have possession again and it's the same it's the same cycle of play, the same pattern of play. They're playing up the pitch. They've got one, two, three, six players in that forward line at one point when you look, and just the two centre backs. This is really putting Norwich under pressure. Norwich chasing shadows at the moment. Ethan Ampadu able to bring the ball forward here with Talk Sport. And Leeds lead Norwich by a golden nil. And even if nothing happens for the rest of the night, it's already been a better second leg than the first. Absolutely. The ball is bang with Melier inside the D. Because there's been something to talk about that's not a controversial refereeing decision. Kamara flicking it on, Somerville falling down. Firpo has it now. It's five yards in for the left-hand touchline, Somerville uh, just losing out. Well challenged there by Stacey. And Sara over on the Norwich right will flick it infield for Ashley Barnes. And Norwich have a throw on halfway. You're listening to Leeds against Norwich in the EFL Championship playoff semi final. And our coverage on Talksport brought to you with McDonald's. Order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. I'll tell you what, one thing Norwich have not managed to do is, is have Leeds defenders facing their own goal, not really put them under pressure, not even a ball over the top and, you know, running back, they just, they've not really had, this is the first bit, I think probably 30 seconds now of a bit of composed possession where they're just getting a feel of the ball, you know, and how far are into, into the game, over 10 minutes into the game and this is the first time they've had any sort of passes together. And Sara picking the ball up in the uh, centre of midfield. He works it out towards the right-hand side. Stacey trying to get there. Did so ahead of Junior Firpo, but it bobbled off him, really. And his second touch is a recovering challenge, and a quite brilliant one. Sensational interception. Ball works inside the Leeds box, but behind Johnny Rowe. And Leeds will be able to bring it away. Great turn by Peru. Got the banner of Ben Gibson. Peru bringing it through the centre circle. Somerville's offside. And it's a free kick to Norwich midway inside their own half. That was much better from Norwich, though. The first even remotely fluid, yeah. fluent passing move we've seen. Yeah, the passage of play. They managed to get sort of four or five players in the box. And that's the only problem. The problem with playing against Leeds like that is that that's where they can hurt you. But they just made a mess of the final pass. But you can see when you do put Leeds under pressure, they allow you. They, they drop the nice space and they allow you back into the, into the penalty area. And the Leeds fans stand to applaud and remember one of their own, Robert Hisco. The Leeds United supporter is the image on the big screen. And something that this club do particularly well. And remembering Fordham Leeds United supporters and 
Our thoughts are this time with Robert's family and friends. Free kick by Norwich, taken quickly. Yenulis is onside. Left hand side of the penalty area. Wins a corner with a cross that deflects back off Archie Gray. Yeah, there's some positives to, to Norwich in the response to going behind, but you know they're probably not going to get that many of them, so I have to make the most of them. They've got a corner now, a set piece, so can they work their set piece just as well as Leeds did? Nunez is the man that's going to come across to take it. Marcelino Nunez has scored the winner against Ipswich last month for Chilean International. Very deliberately places the ball down in the quadrant. And it's a real crowd scene inside the six-yard box. About 15 players in there. It's looking for a near post flick. It was easily cleared though by Ruta. And towards Yanulis, and he works it back down the left-hand touchline for Nunez again. Good movement off the ball from Kenny McLean. Taking it towards the corner flag, I think he's won a corner. Now it's a goal kick. So he tried to cross it with his left foot, I think he just hammered it into his right. And he goes over the line and out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, on this left-hand side, he's just trying to combine with Johnny Roll. You know, he's come back from a, a big injury and he's such a good player before that he's just to get to find his rhythm but with playing it's interesting because from the centre midfield he usually sits, sits in and allows others to go forward but just had to go beyond that and McLean Norwich veteran these days to play in the Canaries last win here at Ellen Road which was back in 2019 he's got a little bit of playoff experience in the past I think that the atmosphere when he was playing in the uh, the playoffs for our broth might have been slightly different to uh, uh, that that he's experiencing in his next playoff campaign 14 years on in the Norwich City show. 14 minutes in, it's Leeds 1, Norwich 0 with Gruev's excellent free kick on 7 minutes, the difference between the two teams. The last 3 or 4 minutes have been Norwich's best 3 or 4 of the game. No foul by Rowe. Referee Gillett's letting plenty go at the moment. It's been consistent. Barnes with a heavy touch loose is out in the midfield. Dispossessed by Gruev. Chance for Ruder to bring the ball forward. Little shimmy. Cuts inside. Nyonto missed his control. Sara loses out, but it's fouled in the process by Kamara. And it's a free well. kick that'll be taken uh, by Norwich inside their own half. Yeah, Jim, but the rest of them well, because like, it's absolutely red hot in here, the atmosphere, and he's made, he's let some go, he's, he's pulled the, the players up for just a little bit too much contact, but it's just he's managing it well. This is the first of the week's playoff semi-finals tomorrow night. Southampton against West Bromwich Albion playing for the right to meet the winners of this one. It's 1-0 to Leeds on aggregate at the moment. And that starts the build-up at 7 tomorrow night here on Talksport ahead of an 8 o'clock kickoff down on the Hampshire coast tomorrow night. The League 1 and League 2 playoff finals coming this weekend as well. Bolton against Oxford on Saturday. 4.15 kickoff on Talksport crew against Crawley is Sunday Talk Sport 2 from 1. The promotion pictures the uh, definitive pieces now being inserted into the jigsaw, which has taken nine months to assemble. And Leeds have put a pretty big one in tonight, you would think, but Norwich have not necessarily responded well, but they're beginning to warm to their task. Yeah. All played forward here by Stacey towards Barnes, and... It's uh, well, kept in by Barnes over on the far touch. So it's just given a shove actually by Somerville. Free kick to the Canaries, Lucy. Yeah, I mean, Norwich are not at it yet. So, you know, from a Leeds point of view, can they get another goal while this is this is happening? And what happens, because the, the, the centre-backs for Norwich are not particularly quick or mobile, when the team high press, it ends up big gaps. And that's where Leeds will be looking to get the late nights. The likes of Ruter on the ball in, the, in that sort of space. Here's Ben Gibson. Playing it back to his goalkeeper. And Gunn taking a couple of touches and then a third and just rolls it outside the penalty area towards Nunez. Nunez for Gibson again. Gibson down towards the left back, Janulis. Norwich trying to be brave, trying to play out and invite the press. Peru winning it back and uh, Gibson then remedies the situation for the Canaries. Uh, plays it forward towards Sara. Sargent dropping off inside the centre circle, spins it wide. Here's Stacey. And a long ball fall from him. Rowe will chase after it, but well, even if he is uh, quick enough to be able to pick that up. I think that was an element of the first leg, Lucy. The Norwich maybe 
lack the bravery to play their natural game and try and play out through the press, but they're giving it a go tonight. Yeah, they're trying, but it's, you know, they just put the ball at risk in the wrong areas, which is fine because they, they pass three or four passes and then it has to go long. But Sargent wasn't ready. They saw that it was a poor ball forward, a big gap, but he's got to be in there ready or, or Rowe's got to be ready for it. That longer pass after two or three shorter passes. Joe Roden plays the ball forward and it's flicked on by Nyonto. One back uh, easily by Shane Duffy. Went forward through the midfield by Duffy and then McLean into the uh, feet of Rowe. Had such an excellent start to the season, scoring in a, a run of consecutive games. He and Sargent have got a good partnership. They've only started eight games together over the course of the season, but ten goals between them in those matches. And tonight, Sargent playing through the middle and Rowe off the left flank. And the ball played into the uh, feet of the young Londoner here. And Rowe laying it back and then getting a return ball from Gibson. Also given the instruction to turn. Rowe picking up possession, goes back for the Teesside of Gibson again. You know, they're playing into Leeds' hands a lot. They're trying to fiddle the ball in central areas where loads of players are. It just needs to go into, go into a little bit of grass, have willing runners, try and stretch Leeds. When you play into feet, you just risk Leeds taking the ball off you. Yanoulis has been fouled, and uh, McLean will take a free kick here for the Canaries. He's still inside his own half, about 15 yards or so. And rolls it back behind Square for Nunez. Now to McLean, and the Norwich captain uh, was fouled again by Ruta, but that was another illustration of the point that you were making, because he, he really invited the challenge, and it was close to losing it before he was caught. Yeah, the, the ball forward at, at the moment, Norwich, is really poor, and... It, you know, they've got the players get it into Barnes's feet he doesn't want to chase and stretch him behind Sargent will do that but they're just trying to fiddle it Nunez looks like he's he, he started well he's dropping between the two centre backs facing the press but it's just those balls into central midfield that's a problem Gray poised again Nyonto ahead of him ball inside the area Peru for two Leeds running away with it inside the opening 20 minutes great ball by Gray Sublime cross by Nyonto. Peru peeling away at the back stick. They lead by two goals to nil. They might have this one in the first quarter of the second leg. Yeah, I mean, Norris just looked worse than they did in the first leg. They don't actually look like they, they believe they, they can play well enough. They're all having a go at each other. And you can't do that. I said if Leeds scored one early, that they'd score two or three. And you can just see that they just feel the strength and the energy from this crowd. They're confident and they've got that second goal. And it's great play on the right-hand side from Nanto. And it's a searching ball. And I don't know what the goalkeeper's doing. It's gone into the six-yard box and he lets Peru have the header when he probably could have come and claimed it. It's really disappointing from a Norwich point of view, but that leaves a playing. Joel Peru scoring just his third goal in his last 17 games, but it is his 16th of the season. 14 of those coming for Leeds, and that arguably the most important of them all. Leeds two up at home to a side who only had the 19th best away record over the course of the season. Norwich who haven't scored in their last two games and they need to score two in the next 70 minutes to even take this into extra time. Leeds have laid down a marker. Their only appearance at Wembley in the last 28 years was in the League One playoff final back in 2008, but 16 years on it looks like they're going to be going back yeah listen I was there and it was horrific <laughs> absolutely horrific trip in the playoffs and hoping you know that Leeds don't look like that they're going to let this slip Norwich look poor they don't look like they've got any belief and Leeds just need to keep going well there was a break before the restart as uh, a couple of smoke bombs were just cleared a, a yellow one and a blue one from the uh, far touch line uh, Scenes of almost ecstasy around Ellen Road. You can understand it, they've never won promotion through the playoffs, and of course, this only takes them to Wembley, but they have been knocked out in the semi-finals in the last two playoff campaigns. They haven't won any of their last four playoff matches here at Ellen Road, but they've got a stranglehold in this one at the moment. But it might change now. Sergeant, great save from Melio. One through ball. 
Sargent running onto it, clean through, one on one, drew the goalkeeper, tried to chip him. Melier stuck a hand up and made a big save. Yeah, great save from Melier. You know, he just made himself big and to do dives in, and it's one ball through. That gives Norwich a bit of confidence. They could have got a goal back then, it just changes the outlook of the game. Norwich get a corner. That was a monumental moment. In comes the corner, a left footed in swinging towards the edge of the six yard box. You'll be able to gather by the cheers. It was a Leeds head on it. Ruter that cleared. Yanulis lays it back. Stacey forced to go all the way back to his goalkeeper, Angus Gunn. And now Gunn looks for the long ball over the top, trying to get Rowe in against Gray, but he's offside. Jim, they're playing in the wrong areas, Norwich. You know, they, they, they're playing, and I understand why they do it. They want to sort of bait the press and then attack the space, but, you know, Leeds are on top. Leeds have got the energy. Let, as soon as you see a ball over the top then to Sargent, he's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. It should have finished. Great save by Melia, but that's what they need to do. They need to face the Leeds defenders towards their own goal. Roden getting the ball for four Gray. For Leeds United side who lead by two goals to nil. Gruev on seven minutes, Peru on 20. And then a big save by Melier in the 23rd minute to deny Josh Sargent who was clean through. Similar, I suppose, to the, the moment the other night when Son was clean through and Ortega made the save. Slightly higher stakes, you could argue, in that game. He's given Manchester City the... Box seat in the Premier League title race that save. Pep say it was the biggest moment of their season so far. Ruta coming forward here for Leeds United. Two goals to the good. A third, it's surely all over. He'll make his way through inside the penalty area, but Yanulis has stumbled and gone down. And it will be a free kick which will be taken by Norwich inside the box and foul by Jorginho Ruta. Talking that title race, Arsenal still hoping. You know, it's 35 years since the side who was second on the morning of the last day have won the title 35 years ago it was Arsenal beating Merseyside opposition they'll be hoping that lightning strikes twice albeit in a very different context of the game they're at home to Everton it's live on Talk Sport 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon and if the Gunners are going to do it you will hear it and only hear it on Talk Sport as McLean brings it forward now for Norwich down towards the left hand side for Rowe who thought that he'd been able to cut back between Gray and Yonto who's convinced he was fouled Yonto brings it away and he's just danced past McLean Nunez coming back Yonto's run 40 yards before Nunez comes back tackles him that looks as though it might have been a foul as well like the row one at the other end the referee allows both to continue and this time it's Norwich who can play their way out from the back with 25 minutes in and these are the thoughts of Lucy Ward listen Norwich are playing in the wrong area so what they're doing is that they allow it they're committing bodies forward and when Leeds regain possession there's so much space that's what you've got to be wearing you've got to make sure that the what ifs what if we lose it when we're up the pitch because this is what Leeds are best at so how are we going to build are we going to build are we going to raid are we going to go quickly are we going to build and we make sure that we've got the numbers and then when they've got possession at the back they, again they're taking risks in the wrong areas and yes, look at David Wagner on the side he's sort of pointing out but nobody will be able to hear him but Norwich needs the big characters in this team to step up. Ganulis playing it forward. Gray was there to deny him any space. Then when they try to work it in towards Rowe, Grew had read the script and got there. Now Kamara. Little one-two with Somerville around the edge of the penalty area. He's inside the box. He's trying to check back. Delicious little reverse ball played in for Somerville. He tried to reverse it for Peru. It's clear and had a play for a Leeds corner. Yeah, Leeds are at it. You know, they're confident. The two goals up. They don't look like they think that they're going to lose and you know they're just trying to get as many as goals as possible because that's something that they haven't done this season and Somerville will get towards the byline from this corner which was worked short they just get another corner out of it which will be their third which they'll take over on the uh, left hand side and Somerville will go across in front of the Norman Hunter stand to take it those uh, white scarves being waved around the heads of the lead supporters down by that corner flag in front of what used to be the, uh, the away end many many years ago in that corner of the ground and Jared Giller the referee before the corner is taken uh, just stopping things because Barnes is involved I think with Thurpo maybe Ampadu uh, there's uh, 
A little gesture from Barnsley gets back to his feet. He's uh, reliving the previous moment. He's showing uh, the referee that he was pushed to the ground. Now he points to his eyes as if to say, what are you watching? Why haven't you not been able to see what was going on? Well, they need a character, Jim. They need some mentality from somewhere. Norwich, and Barnes has been in amongst it, but it probably isn't 100% fit. At the moment it has the makings of being a long night for the Canaries and their final night of the season. They're two down. Leeds work the corner short and get another one. That one conceded by Yanoulis, the Greek international over on the far touchline. Uh, Somerville to take this latest one. And Leeds United substitutes are sent out off the bench and getting a good ovation in front of us. Meanwhile, the team on the field swing the corner in and it was tantalising in the swinger that Gunn had to punch from underneath his bar to get it away Norwich clear as far as halfway where it's picked up by Gray Gray clipping it right footed down towards the figure of Rooter and Gibson comes in and slides it put out of play and it's out for a throw which will be taken on the Leeds United right it's Liam Cooper's name is being sung He's only had a bit part to play in the uh, closing stages of the season, only one league appearance, in fact since late January. There was a, a man that played in the last playoff campaign for Leeds five years ago, back in 2019. They were beating the semi-finals by Derby back then. Here's Yanoulis, clearing the ball on the edge of his own penalty area. It, it took a ricochet and went back towards, even deeper towards the edge of his own box. Norwich clear, picked up though by Ampadu on the left-hand touchline and they very neatly worked the ball back towards Kamara and now Roden and he's got much more time and space to be able to pick the next pass and construct another attack for Leeds. Good value for a 2-0 lead they build up inside the opening 29 minutes. Absolutely Jim, you know, com complete control of the game, couple of wobbles with ones where Sargent went through, great save from Melier but other than that it's been all Leeds, they look confident, I mean the one thing you don't do is turn a the game into a basketball game against Leeds because they'll beat you they're so potent when they win the ball back and they've got a little bit of space to run into and that's what we saw with the second goal they did lose the last two games here in the regular season beaten by Blackburn and Southampton but that having been unbeaten in the previous 21 not playing like a side who took only seven points in the last seven league games this is uh, much more reminiscent of a of a Leeds performance from that that heavy, long, unbeaten run that they, they had through the, the depths of winter. The kind of performance that they showed in the beating Leicester home and away. Bruce. Back for Roden. Roden inside the centre circle. Works it down towards the Leeds United right-hand side for the young Italian winger, Willy Nyonto. Now Gray, still only 17. What a season he has had. His first as a Leeds first team player more than 50 appearances this season having only played once for the first team before the start of the season he's uh, just made a major impact championship young player of the year and that was a pretty easy accolade to predict who was going to win that Yanoulis going back towards his own corner flag for Norwich hit long by Gibson Roden getting the better of Rowe Nunez then doing well to pick up the pieces in midfield ahead of Somerville it's an obvious thing to say Jim but if Norwich need to get the next goal and they need to get it I think before half time just to change the atmosphere in here it's far too easy for Leeds Leeds fans are enjoying it they're going around the, the team and singing the individual player song that's 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 a, that's a slight on Norwich and, and the way that they're playing you know they're going to come here and give everything and Kamara Caught in possession in the midfield by Sargent, but McLean couldn't make the most of that. And Leeds quickly have it. And you talk about the, the third goal tonight being absolutely crucial, and that's what made that Elan Melier save so yeah. significant when he denied Josh Sargent, because they could have halved the deficit straight away and got back within one. You, you just wonder whether a few nerves would have set in. Leeds much the better side. Ruta bringing the ball forward. Getting away from Nunez. Passing it off to his left-hand side for Somerville. Somerville to Firpo. Firpo with a low ball in, and Gibson was there to slide it away. And a play for Leeds. Fifth corner of the night. They lead 2-0. Yeah, that's that's what Ruta's good at, you know, picking the ball up, 
be physical, nobody can get the ball from it and then give it to somebody who can create or score and you know, is a big part of that reaction to, to winning the ball back. Somerville across to take the corner. Gruev stands on the edge of the penalty area. Gray back on the centre circle. Everybody else, though, is pretty much in the penalty area. When the uh, cross is taken, little flick header, and it goes narrowly wide. As Joe Roden that came to meet it, maybe just on his way down by the time the ball got to him, and he couldn't quite get the angle that he wanted, and it just bounced narrowly wide of Gunn's right-hand post now to play for a goal kick yeah I know for a fact that the majority of this Leeds fans are enjoying this but they're thinking this is going too well this is going too well we're well, just a bit more than half an hour into the game and we look comfortable we've scored two goals it's going too well now long ball play for by Gunn and Road is really well to come off the left flank and win it only for Archie Gray Beckenbauer like to come and chest the ball down turn him and they are off towards Nyonto. Is he really only 17? No, it's ridiculous. I mean, the only thing that I worry about, just from a welfare point of view, is the amount of minutes that he's played as a young player from, you know, the previous years. It's tough. It doesn't always have an effect now. It has an effect later on in, in the career, in the next sort of two or three seasons. It happened with Sam Byram. He did the same in his first couple of seasons. And then he struggled with injuries, more or less, all the way through his career. Yeah, Gray making just his... Uh his 52nd appearance tonight. The ball played inside the centre circle. And then Gibson will lay it back towards Shane Duffy. Duffy out towards the right-hand side for Norwich again. It's on the right-hand touchline. And it's given away. A one-back though by Nunez. Under pressure from Somerville. And Norwich able to bring it down on the edge of the centre circle. Asked the rhetorical question whether Archie Gray was really only 17. The answer is no. He's 18. <laughs> there As you go. Hugh Wilsoncroft points out to me. Thank you, Hugh. They're on the front foot again. Right-hand side of the penalty area. And Yonto with a low shot. That's uh, stung the palms of Gunn, but a, a comfortable save to make. 11 to go to half-time. Leads to Norwich nil. You talk about Norwich playing in the wrong areas, but what do they need to do more of? in a bid to be able to try and get a foothold in this game before half time well I, when I talk about playing in the wrong areas they sort of pass, trying to fiddle it into central midfield where that's where the majority of, of, of Leeds players are so they think thank you very much win it back and then all of a sudden they're on top of Norwich it's about getting the ball wide can you get rowing balls can you get Jack Stacey up from right full back and then can you make those runs because you've got two up front you know when he's at the moment he's got Barnes and, and Josh Sargent in those central areas and you've got to occupy the centre-backs properly and that's that's not what's happening they can bring the ball forward again brilliant turn is it really only 18 <laughs> uh, the ball played in towards Ruta and Nunez wins it back and then Gibson can play it out towards Yanulis. Yanulis on the left-hand touchline and Nyonto steamed in to try and win it wasn't expecting Yanulis to check back he then committed himself Nyonto he's fouled him Offers a hand of apology to uh, both the referee and the player. It will be a free kick to Norwich. Just 15 games into the season, they were in the bottom eight, and there was real pressure on David Wagner, particularly after a, a really poor performance at home to Blackburn. Some of the fans calling for his head. From, from there to get in the playoff semi finals, a, a decent achievement. But I do wonder what the future will hold for David Wagner if. Norwich would have be beaten relatively heavily tonight whether that would have any impact on yeah. any decision making process I think the disappointing thing for him is the second best in everything and jewels, individual jewels Somerville playing it out towards Firpo that was a, a big challenge from Stacey and to win the ball back over on the far touchline the Norwich right and he sent a long ball over the top and Barnes has done brilliantly to be able to control it and bring it down Roden stumbled then Barnes stumbled he's ended up going literally through the legs of Roden he kept possession 
Then the ball was played for towards Rowe. He's gone down and has been booked for diving. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Actually, Ashley Barnes did everything he could physically to protect the ball after he slipped. But that's a good example. A little bit of a longer ball and it's not... It's been direct with a bit of purpose and it causes Leeds problems. It did then, but Rowe went down far too easily and the referee was in a good position. He did, it wasn't touched by Gray. Brought his foot away, but they're getting success from a little bit of that longer ball. They're causing problems for the centre backs, but they've not done it enough and not playing in those sort of areas enough. Well, the Championship playoffs has always been very difficult for a side that have finished sixth. Norwich finding that this time around, particularly on the basis that they finished 17 points adrift of Leeds. As I mentioned earlier, it's the biggest gap between third and six for more than 20 years so this is the, the biggest disparity between any two teams that have played a championship playoff semi-final for more than two decades the team finishing six has been beaten by the team finishing third in 15 of the last 18 years and at the moment that's going to be extended to 16 from 19 it is more so than any other division a very very difficult set of playoffs to win for the side that have just snuck in rather than the side that have been in a, a position of strength for most of the season like Leeds have Gray with another good turn ran out of room it's gone out of play for a throw yeah I mean you know there's, there's no argument that Leeds have been the better t team all season than Norwich have but it's an opportunity for Norwich but you know that the, the second best like I said in most things in this game individual duels that's what Wagner will be won't be happy about that you know when it comes face to face that there's not many of them that are coming out on top with the ball and just allowing the Leeds players to have that sort of dominance and the, I don't know how I honestly look at it now Jim I don't know how they're going to turn it around Norwich Janulis trying to work the ball forward Roden on the uh, slide leans in and steers the ball away Grew plays the ball back to the edge of his own penalty area for Gray. And now Melier plays through the penalty area out towards Junior Firpo. Somerville comes to join in. Back it goes from him to the Dominican international Firpo. Will control it again, having received the ball from Ethan Ampadu. Another player who's had an outstanding season. The uh, young Welshman, the the heart of Leeds United's defence more often than not but sometimes in the heart of midfield Kamara to Roden Leeds do see what his future holds as well Joe Roden who's enjoyed his loan spell here from Spurs Kamara able to bring the ball forward it works into the feet of Somerville and then Kamara will get it again and turn it back for Ampadu once more it's midway between the edge of his uh, penalty area and the halfway line as he uh, rolls it forward into the feet of Gruev who's a very clever free kick got Leeds off and running tonight they haven't looked back since yeah and, and they're controlling the tempo of the game they've slowed it down a couple of times just, just allows Leeds to get, to get their breath back and Norwich are chasing shadows Ampadu has got in again he's got round the back he's on the left hand side of the penalty area rooted to try and hit my break for Somerville here's Rooter that's three out of place at Wembley Ellen Road erupts into ecstasy leads three Norwich City nil there are Norwich players lying face down on the turf they know their fate is sealed that their season is over they have been blown away by a white West Yorkshire hurricane tonight in the form of Leeds United they've got a terrible playoff record but they're going to be 90 minutes away from a return to the Premier League yeah it's far too easy from a Norwich point of view and I said about Rutter before the game he doesn't score enough goals and Norwich has been playing that badly that he gets himself on the score sheet great break from Peru and it's a good finish just under the bar he's got his spot on it good strength and this is just it just these players have just used the energy used what the crowd have given them they've not wilted they've stood up they've been strong they've been dominant and they've done absolutely brilliant in his first half he last scored back in February 
That's his first goal in 15. It's only his second here, Lucy, yeah. at Allen Road. In 30 enough. games, 3-0 games. And netted against Swansea. And now has scored just his second goal at Allen Road for Leeds United. Who lead 3-0 with three and a half minutes to go to half time. Rowe has been fouled by Gray. And it's an orange free kick, 10 yards inside, leads territory. And this feels as though it has the potential to be an extremely damaging night for yeah. Norwich, beyond the fact that it, it curtails their season. Absolutely, Jim. You know, the, the, you, you see the fans that have travelled up from Norwich, expected more fight, they expected more belief from these players, but they've been absolutely blown away. Saro with a long delivery out towards the far post. It's headed in and they're headed away by Peru. Nyonto in there ahead of Yanulis. Turn through the midfield. It could be three against two. They're in again. It's Nyonto continuing his run towards the edge of the penalty area. Straight at Gunn who got his body behind it. And then it's clear by Nunez and out of play for a throw. Daniel Vargas stands on the edge of his technical area. Just tells his players to calm down. Wagner stands on the edge of his. And Which just hopes and prays for some kind of reaction, a modicum, a crumb of comfort. Just something to give him a positive hope going into the second half. Yeah, the, 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 the Norwich staff are complaining to fourth official that it was a foul, actually. I think the referee had a couple of players, and I was right behind it, and the referee didn't have a good view of it. And it just allowed Lee to get up the pitch really quickly. And on top, shot, he probably could have gone a little bit closer to take it because he's got the pace, but... A good save by Gunn, but they're right on the rack here, Norwich. Yanulis is the player that is uh, down injured, uh, receiving a little a uh, bit of treatment. He puts his fingers to his nose to see if there's uh, any evidence of blood. Do you know what, Jim? That's the, the first thing that the referee's done wrong in this first half. That's the only thing he's missed in the whole of the first half. I think he's been very good. Now, Yanulis is uh, back on his feet, and he's making his way down towards this uh, near touchline. It's going to be able to continue. Well, we've got a minute to go in this first period. A couple of minutes to be added on, probably. And fourth official, Rebecca Welsh, is just preparing the numbers board. The play's going to resume with a Leeds United throw. But Yanulis not given permission to come back on as yet. So Norwich temporarily down to ten men. But they've worked the ball, Leeds United, from his left-back area. Haven't tried to attack him while he's uh, off the field. And Leeds are just uh, retaining possession and have it with Roden in a, a, a safe area in the midfield. Now they will be able to bring it forward, and they do work it down towards Gray. And Gray will play it in towards the edge of the penalty area for Ruta. Comes back for Gruev, the score of the first goal. Gruev has it again and works it through the uh, centre of midfield. Now played out towards the left-hand side for Somerville. He can't keep it in. And how many extra minutes are going to be prescribed? Fourth official has the, uh, the numbers board in her hands. And it's uh, just waiting a few seconds before sharing the news with us all. Gibson's going to be able to bring it away here for Norwich. Four additional minutes. Barnes getting it forward. McLean. Out towards Yanulis is back on, but Gray's very quickly back goal side of him Yanulis clipping it in Barnes rolling it forward towards Rowe who is offside and it's a free kick but Leeds will take six or seven yards outside their penalty area so in stoppage time at the end of the first half Leeds three Norwich nil here on Talk Sport yeah the biggest criticism that you could give Norwich is that they've not sort of shown any sort of spirit you know they've been completely steamrolled by Leeds to Leeds' his credit but it's far too easy they're just enjoying themselves and really in a second leg of a playoff semi-final they shouldn't be enjoying themselves it should be hard to get through to Wembley and it's just been far too easy for Leeds well as I mentioned they've uh, put a real marker down for Southampton and West Brom who will be watching this with interest fight out tomorrow night it's time tomorrow which of those two leads in all likelihood are going to be playing I'll bring it forward again here with Peru 
A build-up for Southampton West Brom, also nil-nil after the first leg, you'll remember. Is live on TalkSport tomorrow night. Hugh with the build-up from seven. And then Ray Houghton, part of the commentary team, tomorrow night from eight o'clock. Live from St Mary's. Leeds looking for a fourth before half-time. Peru trying to roll the ball in. He's found Furpo. Crowd get to their feet. Gun with the save. Ruta trying to walk it into the net. Couldn't quite. It was a last-ditch interception from Rowe, who slid in about a yard off the line. And was able to smuggle it wide in conjunction with Yanulis. It could and probably should have been four. I tell you what, it's good job the three in a lot because he should have been four. And, uh, took about four touches and it, you can't do that in the six yard box and he was muscled out of it in the end but should have been four for Leeds Leeds will have to make do with another corner which will be their six of this first half Leeds three Norwich nil on talk sport in comes the corner little left footed in swinger just clicked in towards the corner of the penalty area uh, but headed away before he got the fair poke has come off him last and gone out of play for a goal kick for Norwich good luck to David Wagner trying to mentally construct the half-time team talk in his head as to exactly the best way to approach this whether it's going to be one that strips paint off the walls whether he's going to be trying to coax some form of reaction out of Norwich who need an absolutely exceptional second half one of the, the best 45 minutes from any team in the championship this season if they're going to throw themselves a lifeline and take this potentially to extra time Roden playing the ball back to Gruev who's a, just dropped deep and split the two centre halves again for Leeds Ampadu when that happens given a little bit more license to push forward it's 3-0 to Leeds we've got 40 seconds to go to half time here on Talk Sport Lucy yeah I mean they, they, they're calm and, and comfortable leads like I said they've managed the tempo really well they've scored they've been poor defending from Norwich but you know Leeds don't bother about that you know they've played the way that they play high level completely dominated this game and you know made it comfortable now probably for the rest of the game Kamara finding Firpo goes back for Glenn Kamara again Ampadu to Roden and then back for Ampadu once more. Leeds more than happy just to pass out the final seconds of this first 45 minutes. 45 minutes of football that have seen Leeds comprehensively return to the form. Listen to the reaction they get as they leave the field at half-time. Gruev getting them off and running with a brilliant free kick on seven minutes, deceiving and embarrassing the Norwich back line. Peru double the lead on 20. Ruta out in the third, four minutes before the break and should have scored again in first half stoppage time. Big save, and mentioned in dispatches for Elan Melier, who denied Josh Sargent only about a minute or so after the 2-0 goal had gone in. Might it have made for a different story to the night? Had Norwich got it back to 2-1, we will never know. But it's going to be an heroic, if not implausible, fight back if Norwich can even come close to getting this to extra time from here. Half time, Leeds 3, Norwich 0. So Sykes on, the Spanish winger who has had a couple of red cards this season. He played in the league for Alaves early in his career. And he's going to come on here. And almost certainly he will play off the left hand side. Exactly how they're going to shuffle things around remains to be seen. They've got the option potentially of moving Rowe through the middle alongside Barnes. We'll find out very shortly. It will be uh, Norwich in yellow shirts and green shorts who will kick from left to right in the second half and getting us underway. Leeds United in all white and three goals to the good Lucy Ward. Yeah, I mean, you know, I look at the Norwich fans and these players have to show something. They've travelled up here, they've followed the team all season and that's probably the most disappointing half of football they've probably ever seen and they saw, want to see a reaction from their team in this second half. Uh, Barnes caught a good challenge by Ampadu and a chance for Leeds United to bring it forward and they could be in again right at the start of the second half big save from Gunn they could have been four Peru firing at him and he did really well Angus Gunn his best moment of the night but they're in just 30 seconds after the restart 
Here's Kamara finding Junior Firpo. Somerville will take it on now. Norwich doing their best to hunt in packs and try and work the Leeds United players back towards halfway. Gruev will now work it out towards Archie Gray. Yonto for Gray again, and he had him from the right hand touchline. Yeah, so it's just also easy I around know. the edge of the area, wasn't so it? So, David Wagner, and you've, you've given a half time team talk, you give your team instructions, and then within sort of 15 seconds, Leeds have passed the way past your centre backs with ease again, and only the goalkeeper keep it from being fought. Yeah, a big save from Gunnar. Here's Roden, and a Leeds player has gone down off the ball and uh, needs a little bit of treatment which uh, gives us the opportunity to see a replay of that really good save from Gunn it was just far too easy and made the run off Ben Gibson Peru as well Jim I think they thought he'd scored I think he hit it with enough power I think if he'd have placed it it'd have trickled in either side of Gunn and Daniel Farker reacts and I think he's just been greedy his team have been absolutely wonderful tonight but he wants that fourth Ampadu is 10 yards inside his own half. Leeds restored to their full complement of 11. And Ampadu goes back for Melier again. Norwich haven't beaten Leeds in five attempts. Norwich's last win here in 2019 when Daniel Farker was the boss. And he's almost certainly going to be on the winning side again tonight. The only man to win two divisional titles with the Canaries in their history. Five years ago, winning the championship, they uh, were immediately relegated, but he took them back up at the first time of asking. But almost certainly now looking at a third successive championship season after what so far has been an absolutely torrid night for them. Rowe has been fouled, and it's a free kick that Leeds will uh, that uh, Norwich will take inside the centre circle. They trail three 0 I mean, David Wagner's just had a lot of stick this season you know not playing the way that the fans think that he should be playing you know when, it, when he's been under pressure he's been quite pragmatic which is not like him but you know he probably you know if it ends how we think he's going to end tonight that he probably will be under severe pressure even though they've done well in 2024 Stacey plays the ball back for Duffy oh, Duffy working it forward towards Kenny McLean Duffy again to Stacey down the right hand touchline opportunity for Sarah that they haven't really been able to get into the game too much now play for good movement by Barnes allowing space for McLean in behind him McLean with a left footed shot that's going to go out of play for a throw it's only their second shot of the night and in some ways it's such an eloquent statement about yeah. how Norwich's night has gone yeah yeah show me a, a passage of play that reflects Norwich's play tonight now that certainly is that McLean has a shot and it spins out from his left foot from the right side of the pitch and goes out for throwing on the left side of the pitch. And the Championship playoff final is live on Talk Sport a week on Sunday. That's May the 26th. We'll be at Wembley for what will almost certainly be Leeds against either Southampton or West Brom. The second leg of their semi final, nil nil after the first, is live tomorrow night with the build up started with Hugh from seven ahead of an eight o'clock kickoff. Norwich in possession inside their own half. Worked all the way back for Gunn. Long clearance from the Scottish international who was injured against Leeds. Back in October, a game that Norwich led 2-0 and lost. 3-0 down in this one. Leeds trying to work the ball forward again with Somerville making an excellent third-man run. Root to try to slip the ball in between right back and centre half. Peru had gone down. The ball ends up going out of play for a goal kick and Norwich in a hurry trying to restart play as quickly as they can just trying to make something happen as they desperately look for a lifeline to get back into this game there's no sign of it yet yeah I mean I don't know who that was Janoulis I think who just ran with the ball and they start doing things individually make it even worse for, for Norwich Gray sending a cross in for Somerville but he's the smallest man on the pitch who's a flying header and he didn't beat the bar by much yeah that will cap it off from there he's about five foot tall and he won a header against them two centre-backs and they cannot feel sorry for themselves these Norwich players you know you cannot crumble I know it's difficult it's the second half you're probably going to lose this game and lose it comfortably but it'll tell a, a lot of people about a lot of these players if they do give up Kamara slipped to his left-hand side Somerville 
works it onto his left and got the shot in. Gunn forced the save with his left heel to be able to get the ball away and kick it out for the first corner of this second half. It still all leads there. Three goals to the good and hungry for more. Yeah, good save again by Gunn. He's kept leads out at the start of this second half. Somerville will take this corner. And the white lead scarves are being gleefully waved around the heads of Leeds United supporters in all four stands. In from Somerville, looking for the near post flick, which was forthcoming. It's hit Furpo, really. He turned onto it, probably struck his back on the way out of play. For a goal kick that'll be taken by Gunn away to our left-hand side. I think there's any team ever enjoyed the second half of the second leg championship playoff and semi-final I don't think that that's the case but these Leeds fans are enjoying themselves I think the players feel comfortable they feel confident and they're managing the game well Ethan Amber who's got the ball at his feet Norwich almost in a position to get Gabriel Sara going I wonder if it's going to be his last game in a Canary shirt tonight Melier will clear and one crucial save he's had very little to do in fact I don't think he's had another shot to save apart from that one in a one-on-one -on -one from Josh Sargent midway through the first half which kept the score at 2-0 to Leeds Boyer Sykes is fouled the first contribution from him since coming on and it's a free kick to Norwich you never know got to do it step by step if they were to score the next goal they just might sow the First seeds of self-belief, another from there, and you really never know if 3-0 becomes 3-2. Already seen that in these astonishing playoff games uh, that we brought you on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 this season already. You think back to the, the Bolton Barnsley game, which was done and dusted with a three-goal aggregate lead at half-time in the second leg of that, but Barnsley did get two back. Leeds. Looking for more themselves. Somerville still travelling. Peru, good save again. Gunn literally single-handedly is keeping this respectable. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the problem. Norwich, you've got to, they've got to go for it, so they've got to commit players forward. But as soon as you do that, it's when Leeds are best because they can just find the space and exploit it. And now Stacey has run into trouble and felt that he was fouled. Jared Gillett, as we were saying in the first half, has been really consistent. He's let plenty go. Stacey working through the midfield it's a nice turn by Rowe he's got the pace to get past Grew he's going to get a yellow card for that just pulled him back and knew that the little Londoner was past him and he pulled him back by the neck of his shirt and Grew in the book yeah that's much better in terms of Rowe and the, the way that he's playing you know, he's got that pace and you know, can he get up and beyond Barnes we've got signs now on that left hand side he showed a couple of good touches and a couple of good runs but Leeds are in a good position in terms of their shape you know they're, they're not really taking much risk in terms of pushing players forward apart from when they've got really good possession but certainly the far away dominant in all aspects of the game and just to put things in perspective Norwich have got what 35 minutes now to score three goals against the lead side with the second best defensive record in the championship who's only led in six in the last 19 hours of football here at Ellen Road and Norwich need three in a little over half an hour Rowe trying to bring it forward and again just ran down a cul-de-sac Somerville's got it back and he'll play it out towards the right hand side for Gray Gray back behind square for Kamara to Gray again and Kamara, the former Rangers man, checks his run, plays it back for Gruev, who scored the first goal of the night, his first in Leeds United colours, only the fourth of his career. I tell you what, Jim, I think Daniel Farker deserves a lot of credit because they were right in the doldrums. When they lost here against Blackburn, you know, the fans getting on the back, the players didn't look confident, and I think, you know, the, you look at the way, in reflection now, the way he played that first leg, where he made sure they didn't concede, just to try and stop the rot of what had been happening. And what a great jump, Ruta flicking it on, Somerville, and just tried to flick the ball to the side of Gunn, got it all wrong, and he was under pressure and he had to hit the shot early and it was saved, Norwich will break, try and get the ball forward quickly themselves, with Sykes down the left-hand touchline, sliding challenge 
to try and win the ball back was mistimed and that's going to be a yellow card is it? yeah Ruta I think it was who just came back and Sainz just offered that little bit of an injection of pace he's positive front foot he gets the ball and his first thought is running forward and it's about getting players up with him now they've got a, a set piece Norwich on that left hand side you know, can they put Leeds under pressure so a free kick that'll be taken on the Norwich left it's seven yards outside the penalty area it's only a couple of yards in from the left hand touchline and there are five in Canary Yellow inside the penalty area Gibson, uh, Stacey I beg your pardon is lurking with intent on the edge of the D Gibson is inside the box centre half partner Shane Duffy is in there as well right arm raised above the head of Janulis is going to fire this in it's a left footed delivery very deep easily claimed by Melier it wasn't quite deep enough to get Gibson round the back and it ended up coming to the hands of the goalkeeper in the middle of the six yard box Bowls it out quickly Leeds have it with Kamara and they still have a 3-0 lead with 12 minutes gone in the second half yeah, and all the opportunities however small that Norwich have had to put Leeds under pressure they've not taken and they'll allow Melier to just pick that out of the sky not put any pressure whatsoever but you know that they've got to go for it Norwich and going for it means that you know you leave less players at the back you leave your goalkeeper open which is what Gunn has done really well could have been six five or six and it not been for his saves in the second half but they're not getting anything from the other end when they get up the pitch Norwich Boy signs into the feet of Ashley Barnes he turns but Ampadu was just waiting knew that Barnes was going to turn to try and lay it off for Stacey and as soon as he moved his right foot towards the ball Ampadu was there to be able to block the pass Sarah back to Nunez and he'll bring it forward from the edge of his own penalty area goes forward into the feet of Kenny McLean Nunez to his left hand side for Gibson McLean again rambustuous challenge coming in from Kamara it's fouled him and it's a free kick which will be taken by Norwich just outside their own penalty area Leeds' press is, is so good and they, they lock right on and Norwich have, have not had the ability or technique to escape that press whatsoever probably a couple of times in the whole of the game you know that Leeds have decided to lock on high you know lock on in those central areas and they've won the ball back so many times well there's something I haven't seen before Ilan Melier retrieved something from inside his own penalty area and raced out when the ball had gone out for that free kick to the referee and I thought what's that? that something been thrown on no it's the bottle of spray <laughs> that marks where the free kicks are taken had fallen off it's a little mounting point on the belt of uh, Jared Gillett or whatever keeps them on and uh, Melier giving that to him the referee looking a little bit shamefaced and we're all in a position that we can continue again here's Nunez midway between the edge of his own penalty area and the halfway line ball from him towards Sarah back to Ben Gibson the former Middlesbrough player who's turning and almost turning into trouble and then he plays it out towards and Sarah again long left footed diagonal from him and Stacey's going to race onto it Rose gone down off the ball Stacey is there he's got it right hand side of the area nobody in the penalty area for him to try and hit he did wrap his right foot around it Barnes did his best to get there but Ampadu was there first to be able to clear yeah that's what they've not done enough of. that's what I'm saying about playing in the right areas you know take leads over to one side and then the switch Stacey's always there we played an hour it's 3-0 to Leeds United as it's been since the 40 minute mark Kenny McLean, a Scottish international. Quite a few players losing their footing. I don't know whether there's a, a little bit of chew on the ground. Listen, you've warmed up the other first half. Recognise what footwear you've got on. Definitely getting it forward here for Stacey. Now Sarah, Kamara. Playing it forward and Rowe has caught him. Now he's already on a yellow card. Got booked in the first 45 minutes for diving. And he caught Kamara there. And he's just got to keep his temper under check. Jared Gillis 
having a word with him but a lecture's going to suffice yeah we're just watching the, the replay and yeah there's not that much in it Kamara just throws himself to the floor he sort of body checked him just caught him as he ran past but just needs to be careful Rowan I think that the referees just I think for that second yellow card I, I, I do think the threshold is a little bit higher particularly it's a silly one for a, a dive for his first yellow card but he just caught him didn't he as he went past and because he spun round on the floor the reaction of the crowd nobody wants a, a yellow card but I think, I think the referees ref this well he's still on his knees Kamara um, he's been winded won't he I would suspect I think he just caught across his his chest Norris is going to make a double change and we're going to see Sam McCallum and Christian Fasnack the Swiss international and there's a very encouraging hug given a fast knack by uh, David Wagner who has got experience in winning playoffs in the past with Huddersfield back in 2017 but they didn't win any of the three games and brilliantly made it through a nil nil draw at home a 1-1 one draw away with an own goal and then a nil nil draw in the final before another penalty shootout victory against Reading since the turn of the century any team that has got 27 wins all 90 points has been promoted Leeds United finishing this season with both 90 points and 27 wins I'm hoping that that run will continue the last team to get 90 points and not go up Sunderland back in 1998 and they lost the playoff final on penalties a uh, game against Charlton one of the uh, our esteemed colleagues that took a part in but I won't mention Mickey Gray by name the ball <laughs> goes out towards the, the right hand side there's Ruta ball towards Somerville Somerville with his low centre of gravity he was caught referee plays a good advantage another sliding challenge comes in from McLean and it's a free kick to Leeds about nine yards outside the penalty area right of centre not a, not a dissimilar position to the one that Gruev put in and his name being chanted by the Leeds fans who want to see him have another crack at it yeah I mean Sam McCallum's come on and gone left back in place of Shanulis and then McLean's gone into that left centre back position and Gibson's gone off and just put in Fasnacht on who didn't look particularly happy about coming on yeah go and go and do your stuff 60 odd minutes you're 3-0 down away from home but they need an injection of something uh, so just to confirm Fasnacht and McCallum for Janulis and Gibson with McLean dropping in at centre half so again the referee uh, the, I beg your pardon the Norwich goalkeeper has lined up a two man wall Somerville leaving it it is bent in left footed from Gruev headed back in by Ampadu and then headed away inside the six yard box by Duffy Kamara continuing his run round the corner and the ball has gone out of play for a goal kick that was where Angus Gunn was expecting the first one to go in the seventh yes. minute the left footed clip ball deep towards the far post instead he went for the near post with a shot that time he has delivered it deep towards that far post area for Ampadu's yeah, run completely caught out for that first Leeds goal and that was the start of the onslaught wasn't it Angus Gunn making sure he concentrated then but he didn't really need to because it was put far post that time and Leeds just seen out the remaining time really making sure they keep control and keep Norwich at arm's length and Norwich just toughing and puffing but getting absolutely nowhere in possession 60-40 to Leeds exactly the same as it was in the first leg the difference being that it's 15 shots to three tonight in Leeds favour we only saw three attempts on target between the sides in the first leg we've had 10 tonight in the opening 65 minutes and three of them have gone in Ampadu back defending makes the ball back to his uh, goalkeeper Melier and the Frenchman booms a long clearance over halfway Duffy with an easy job of climbing over William Nyonto can head the ball forward through the midfield for Norwich and Kenny McLean strikes forward here from centre half out of the left hand side for McCallum a chance for McCallum to deliver not the worst ball by any stretch of the imagination chested out for Sainz whose right footed shot is blocked that's much better from Norwich Leeds clear put it out of play for a throw now I won't say that Leeds panic when Norwich put the ball into the box but they don't look comfortable and, and Norwich have not done it enough 
I mean, you can even hear it in the crowd. The crowd are really happy. They're all jubilant. But when Norwich get into the final third and actually put something like a good ball into the box, then it just causes a, a few murmurings. Uh, Dan James has been called back. He's going to be on in a moment for Leeds. You're listening to Leeds against Norwich in the EFL Championship Playoff Semi-Final on Talk Sport with McDonald's. Order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Sorry. Sainz having to stretch the receiver, slightly misdirected ball from McCallum. As Sainz has done well, having brought it under control, and now will bulldoze his way through. Barnes trying to backheel the ball back into his path. The referee's given a free kick to lead to an offside against Rowe. Norwich thought they should have had a free kick for a foul on Sainz as yeah. he was blocked off. Sainz has been Norwich's best player and he's only started the, the second half. Lots of determination and he was taken out but I think when he played the ball before he was taken out there was a Norwich player offside but that's positive from him he's trying to carry his the whole team on his back yeah Barnes was the man that was actually flagged offside uh, and then Rowe was offside behind him when he played it on eventually as well ball away from McLean ball down in the uh, centre of midfield by Leeds United to get Somerville going Somerville to his left hand side for Nyonto Willie Nyonto parried by the goalkeeper back in from Furpo and Chris Somerville is in there to make it four and if there was even the merest scintilla of doubt that has now been evaporated Leeds United are in the playoff final and they have been quite magnificent tonight Norwich have been sent packing in devastating fashion and Crescencio Somerville makes it for this a vintage night for Leeds they haven't had too many in the playoffs this one they will never forget yeah brilliant again from Leeds Somerville in space I think it's not who had this shot he came back to third pole clever as well instead of having a shot from a, a really tight angle he just side put it across the six yard box Somerville was there he deserves that goal as well Somerville he's been incredible again tonight had an incredible season Somerville scoring his 21st goal of the campaign three of them have come against Norwich and that's only his second goal in his last eight games here at Ellen Row William Yonto playing a part in that goal and that was his last contribution he's off Dan James some player to be able to bring off the bench at championship level the man who scored 10 in his last 15 matches here at Allen Road comes on for the final 20 minutes or so yeah and I think again it's a, the difference between Leeds and a lot of the teams near the top of the championship is that firepower Dan James would get in any other team in the championship probably teams in the Premier League as well and he comes on as sub he's, he's performed really really well this season and, and most of the time may do with a with a substitute appearance and with wonderful self-deprecation a chorus of Leeds Leeds are falling apart again here's Somerville making his way forward towards the edge of the penalty area and then trying to twist and turn and get away from Stacey who's fouled it Norwich have long since known their fate it must be very difficult for the players absolutely in the, the 48th game of the league campaign effectively to do more than go through the motions when you know that you're out and your season is over yeah I, I, I think they knew the inevitable when they're in the team coach coming into Allen Road to be honest the way that Norwich have played but you know this is excruciating for everybody associated with, with Norwich and they're just getting frustrated and you can't blame them either Kamara goes back for Ampadu Druev now towards Gray Leeds leading 4-0 on the night and on aggregate here against Norwich City a team that finishes third in the championship such a good record at getting promoted far the best record nine of the last 19 playoff winners have been the side that have finished third in the regular season and Leeds hoping to extend that to 10 out of 20 scarves being whipped around the heads with real fervor and pace now a proper party atmosphere what a way to sign off for another season of football at Ellen Road knowing that there's that date at Wembley a week on Sunday to come 
I think, sorry, Jim, I think Daniel Farr could be looking at this now and thinking, right, don't want any injuries now. Right, we, we, we're going to be going to Wembley. Let's not get carried away in the remainder of this game. Let's keep my best players so that they're ready for Wembley and they're not going to get themselves injured. So, with that in mind, the uh, potential to make a number of changes off the bench. Uh, the subs we haven't seen so far, Cresswell, Cooper, Anthony, Shackleton, Gelhart, Robertson, Joseph and I think a few of those are going to be getting match time very shortly given away by Sara in the midfield just a, a little reverse ball through the midfield that was easily picked up by Ruta Stacey committed himself and did well dived in, timed his challenge well Fasnak then has uh, caught Ruta off the ball Fasnak hasn't really been able to get involved in the game since coming on Norwich pump it forward long towards Barnes he's beaten to it by uh, Gruev who's gone down uh, Roden it is I beg your pardon who's gone down and it's going to be a free kick two leads and the opportunity to make some changes I see Mateo Joseph former England under 20 international now a Spanish under 21 international and he's going to be the first come off the rank he's going to be coming on very shortly he won't be the only one and more action on that Leeds bench do you know what Jim I think that that Joseph, is, when he played against Chelsea in, in the Cup, he played really, really well. And when they've been struggling for goals in those sort of the last remaining games of, uh, of the Championship season, Leeds, the fans have been crying out for him. Why is he not playing? Why is he not getting more of a chance? Because he plays so well when he plays. But obviously, I think he has those players he trusts. Daniel Farker, the likes of Perot, the likes of Ruta, and, and obviously Patrick Bamford when he's fit. Yeah, he scored twice in that FA Cup tie at Chelsea. Also scored within seconds of uh, coming on at Watford. He's never scored here at Ellen Road. He's going to be on in a moment. Uh, so too Connor Roberts and Jaden Anthony. So it'll be a triple change incoming for Leeds United and Daniel Farker, who lead 4-0. And tomorrow we'll find out who they're playing. Southampton, West Brom. Build up at 7 for an 8 o'clock kickoff at St Mary's down on the Hampshire coast tomorrow night. Leeds on the front foot again. Another right footed shot comes in. This one from James. And he's blocked and goes out of play for a throw that will be taken over on the Leeds right. And that is the cue for the changes. So Ruta comes off. And he scored only his second goal at Ellen Road tonight. Some of it is coming off as well. Scorer of the fourth. And the final player to make way is Joel Peru. So the three most attack-minded goal scorers tonight are off. Peru, Ruta and Somerville. And they'll be replaced by Roberts, Joseph and Anthony. Yeah, I did say that I think that Daniel Parker will be looking at this now and gone, you know, the more frustrated these Norwich players get, he doesn't want anybody to get injured. It's a, a squad game and they've got one of the strongest benches in the championship leads and why not use it? It's been a terrific night for this football club and Joseph come on and try and get himself on the score sheet. Well, I touched earlier on Kenny McLean's previous playoff experience coming with our broth and the difference in atmosphere from from there to here Jaden Anthony's played in the playoffs before for Weymouth and now four years on he comes on into the the white hot cauldron of Ellen Road for a championship playoff semi-final I think it just means as well Archie Gray goes into central midfield so Roberts has come up on that right hand side so he's playing on the right Jaden Anthony's playing high on the left Joseph through the middle James is on the right uh, so the Leeds United side now, probably worth going through it all because it's shuffled around a bit. Melier in goal, it's Roberts, Roden, Ampadu and Firpo. Then in midfield, Gruev and Kamara still. Then on the left-hand side is Anthony. Gray at 10, James on the right and Joseph through the middle. That's a, a pretty young team by and large. And one that is having the night of its life. Ball is over on the Leeds United right. They're playing out very ably from the back. Roden down towards Firpo, who will uh, control it on the uh, the left back position. Works in field of the uh, more experienced Kamara. And now down towards Kamara again. Just a, a little one-two infield down towards Junior Firpo. Firpo's got it, just shy of halfway. Joseph drops short to meet it. 
spins and fires the ball out towards the right hand side real brisk ball that Roberts tried to control is a very difficult task for him then it's play four looking for Ashley Barnes he finds himself sandwiched between Grueth and Roden and the referee just tells him pretty disdainfully to get up and get on with it Leeds will bring it forward again Joseph and try to work the ball out to the uh, right hand side for Gray Roberts has uh, won it back and now another sliding challenge comes in um, is that Jan, uh, 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 Boyer Sainz over on that far touch line on Roberts and it's going to be a free kick which will be taken by Leeds on halfway 76 gone Leeds 4 Norwich nil here on Talk Sport and here's Lucy Ward yeah I think Norwich is starting to lose their heads as various players that are remonstrating with the referee and this has been an absolute hiding for them it'll be embarrassing in terms of the effects on their egos but I think Leeds have just shown the dominance reflected the dominance really that we've seen throughout this championship season yes they they did wobble at the end of the regular season Leeds but I think that they've got themselves back on it and just when it was needed in this second leg nobody in Leeds of any Leeds persuasion expected it to be this comfortable ball out of play off Stacey and there were those of us that didn't share the all-pervading optimism of May and thought that this could go right to the wire myself included I certainly didn't see this coming I thought that Norwich for all the fact that their away form has not been good and thought that they would have enough about them to be able to go some way towards quieting the crowd and make life difficult as soon as that grew a free kick went in on seven minutes the script was written yeah I mean I, I watched the Norwich players as they came onto the pitch before the warm-up when they just arrived and they did look they did, were looking around this place and thinking you know this is a difficult this is going to be a difficult game and, and they never really recovered from that they never really had the belief you could see it in the players that the lack of belief that they could come here and win Duffy slices the ball away and it's out of play for another throw which will be taken by Leeds a reminder that we've got the other two playoff finals coming up over the course of this weekend Bolton Oxford Saturday at 4.15 and then Crew Crawley Sunday at 1 o'clock over on TalkSport 2 also on Sunday the conclusion of this epic Premier League season and if Arsenal are going to win the title for the first time in 20 years you will only be able to hear it on Talk Sport. game kicks off at 4 they're at home to Everton if they win Manchester City have to win to deny them the title you'll hear news of every goal as it goes in over the course of the afternoon Sam Matterface talking you through the action from the Emirates Arsenal against Everton on Sunday kicking off at four we've also got a stack of other games as well many of them on the talk sport app and the details are on the app for you but let me also flag up Tottenham's trip to Sheffield United when Spurs get a positive result in that game and they will cement fifth place when Sheffield United Spurs talk sport two four o'clock on Sunday afternoon as I mentioned every goal as it goes in live on the TalkSport Network on Sunday at the end of this Premier League season and is it going to be Leeds Southampton or West Brom that are up in the Premier League with them all next season and that playoff final is a week Sunday the 26th and that also is live here on TalkSport the here and now Norwich have possession at the back with Duffy comes down towards Stacey uh, Sorensen is going to be coming on in a moment for the Canaries and we're going to see uh, Sidney Van Hooydonk as well. So a double change being made. Ashley Barnes is coming off. And ironic cheers for him as he leaves the field. Said earlier he's cast in the role of pantomime villain tonight. And Barnes comes off and Rowe comes off as well. Sorensen on and Van Hooydonk. Yeah, Ashley Barnes just biting his tongue there. This is not nice for a player. You know, he's trying to work his way back to being fit and playing in this game as such an experienced player, but it just hasn't worked out for any Norwich player and now he's been substituted and the Leeds fans heckling him. So Sorensen comes on, the Danish central midfielder, for the 200th game of his career. And Sidney Van Hooydonk as well. 
Dutchman son of Pierre on loan from Bologna just one goal in his last 27 games which was a Coppa Italia tie back in October he's yet to score in 10 previous substitute appearances for Norwich he hasn't started for the club as yet we're in the final 10 minutes and Johnny Rowe the other player that went off and another round of applause from the passionate lead support as Liam Cooper gets ready and he's going to be the last lead sub to come on yeah just having the luxury of allowing Liam Cooper to say goodbye to Ellen Rhodes he's been a terrific servant Liam Cooper club captain you know, captain for a lot of years when it was difficult when the owners weren't that good at this place and now he's just been allowed just probably about 10 minutes with additional time to just get the adulation of the crowd really and what a, situ what a circumstance for Leeds to be in to be able to do that and it's going to be his 284th Leeds appearance for a man I think I'm right in saying please correct me if I'm wrong has played under more Leeds managers than any other player in history which speaks of his longevity but clearly it speaks of the revolving door to the manager's office under the previous regime yeah, as well it, he has seen the, the, the best and worst of Leeds in recent times he's seen the best under Bielsa the worst of times under Massimo Cellino when he was in charge of this place so it's certainly fitting that he gets this moment that he gets this crowd singing his name and you know terrific servant for Leeds and it'll be on his way I was suspecting the summer that grew coming off massive ovation for him I mean they're all on their feet to applaud the arrival of Cooper but they've been happy to put their hands above their head and give Gruev the departure he deserves superb goal for the Bulgarian tonight his first in Leeds United colours and a great reception for Cooper as he comes on and the first thing that happens Ethan Ampadu hands him the captain's armband Uh, Leeds will restart play with a long throw taken by Roberts tilled it 30 yards back inside his own half so that Cooper gets an early touch Cooper to Ampadu back for Melier and now Ampadu will be able to bring the ball forward in towards the feet of Joseph Joseph spinning the ball down towards uh, Junior Firpo then ricochets through the midfield but Gray is there for Leeds Roberts makes a run on the overlap down the right hand side chance for James to deliver cross was a little low and flat and Kenny McLean with a diving headed clearance gets it away towards halfway be picked up again there by Joe Roden and the, uh, the one time Swansea defender finds Ampadu and he goes back for Cooper uh, so Ampadu's moved forward into midfield that's how they shuffle things around with Cooper coming on for Gruev Ampadu uh, just uh, moving forward 10 yards so it's now Cooper alongside Joe Roden and if Cooper scores they're on the pitch absolutely and I just think that it's the could in the wildest dreams that this semi-final second leg would end up like this for, for the Leeds fans but they need to enjoy it while they can because Wembley will be a completely different story whoever it is that they face it'll be a lot more difficult than facing this Norwich team at Ellen Road and because of the style of play and the pressing that Leeds have does the famed big pitch at Wembley maybe cause a few problems for them will they be able to play their natural game then? well I mean you looked at Southampton the last game of the season Southampton absolutely outplayed Leeds here at Ellen Road so they'll be hoping it isn't Southampton because it's just something that they've got over this Leeds team but it will be different it's at Wembley a big occasion you know they feel comfortable at Ellen Road now this Leeds team but you know all they could do tonight is do what they've done and they've absolutely taken Norwich apart Norwich have absolutely had one yeah I'm sure this is going to be something we'll be talking about tomorrow night but if you look at the four teams that finished in the playoff positions and just had a, a little mini table between the four Southampton picked up 14 points from their six games uh, Leeds and West Brom seven and Norwich five so uh, there's a line of form that suggests that Southampton if they make it through against West Brom would be the favourites but it is a big hit the ball play for Joseph will chase McLean across the cover he's still going through it back towards Garn it looks as though it might just have gone out of play for a corner and it certainly has now as he slices his clearance away I think he's probably happy for he 
kicks it clear from McLean's very brisk back pass and Leeds have a corner as they look for number five. Yeah, I think there's 17 points difference between these two teams and on the pitch tonight it looks more like 70. James is going to take the corner, it's Leeds eighth of the game. And Cooper's made his way forward. There will be no more popular goal scorer than he. He's waiting by the penalty spot. McLean's keeping an eye on him. It's in towards the near post. It's uh, much the worst of the corners that we've seen tonight. And uh, even the odd boo as he was easily cleared. And James picks up the next ball from uh, the cone and throws it back for Kamara. It is a, a Leeds throw. But it's midway inside the uh, Norwich half. Junior Firpo's got it. Throws it back towards Cooper. Cooper to Roden. Roden to Kamara. Leeds just still continuing to string the passes together with well, three and a half minutes plus stoppage time. Might be a fair bit of stoppage time to be added. And it's 4 0 to Leeds United. Kamara playing it forward. Joseph to Jaden Anthony. And towards the Leeds United right now for Connor Roberts, who's put under immediate pressure by McCallum. And it was telling pressure as well, because uh, Boyer Sainz is able to bring the ball away. Sainz only gets so far before a strong Ampadu challenge dispossesses him. But Norwich have it again in the heart of the midfield. Nunez, the Chilean, playing it to, back to Sorensen. And now he goes out towards the left-hand side for Norwich to just desperately try and get themselves into a position where they might be able to sneak a consolation goal to score the last goal of their season but opportunities have been so isolated just the one real good chance that they've been able to create tonight and they only had one the other night the ball on the left hand side of the penalty area they will bring it forward here with Fasnacht Fasnacht laying it back to McCallum chance for him to deliver left footed ball in towards the near post and it's a shot that goes some way wide. Disappointing effort from Van Hoydon. And out of play for a goal kick that Melier will take. ATA gone, leads four, Norwich nil. I do think that from the 60-odd minute that Norwich were willing this game to finish, willing this game to end. I think that the power of this stadium beat them before they even started. And that's not good from a Norwich point of view. But you know, Leeds have certainly used it to their advantage. Melier to take the goal kick. Long left footed clearance from him. Uh, your chance to react to this performance. Leeds fans, how confident are you going to Wembley? The sports bar open for business. 03717 double two double three double four is the number to call. 90 seconds of the 90 minutes remain. Balls with Cooper on the edge of his own penalty area. Played out towards Junior Furpo. James motioning that he wants the ball just chipped over the top of Stacey for him to run onto and coming forward from the left hand side is Archie Gray Gray flicking it brilliantly around the corner for James who tried to ride the challenge which came in it was a genuine attempt from Duffy to win the ball he genuinely didn't get there and it is a free kick on the left hand side of the box yeah it's good play by Archie Gray you know physically he's still growing but he manages the ball and deals with the ball so well he just allowed Dan James for that run well there's a public appeal for the Leeds fans not to enter the field of play at full time that'll be interesting to see how that goes Leeds with this chance then to set the seal on a quite brilliant night free kick which James will take just outside the left hand side of the area it's hit in towards goal he went for goal quite clearly it wasn't one of those teased balls towards the top right hand corner of the far post he's trying to blast that in underneath the bar he's put it over it's gone out of play for a goal kick now we're about to go into stoppage time and Norwich fans will be praying what they would give to see a number one yeah. on that board it is only two it probably should be six <laughs> Two minutes left in Norwich's season. Stacey playing the ball through the midfield here for Sorensen. And he'll work it out towards the Norwich left-hand side. The Wembley songs are starting all around us. 
you think of club the size of Leeds, visitors to Wembley so rarely. We talked about that 2008 playoff final where Leeds just didn't turn up, beaten by Doncaster, who thoroughly deserved the win that day. It's the only time that Leeds have been at Wembley for 28 years. Yeah, I mean, they could have filled the Wembley Stadium themselves. Don, Don, Donny didn't really have that many fans there, but they still won, and that's what I'm saying. It's not always about the fans tonight. It has been that energy and this stadium has scared Norwich to death. They've got to make that at Wembley as well, and it'll be a lot tougher for Leeds, but they've got to enjoy this night. In the final minute of football to be played at Ellen Road this season. And Leeds are leaving with a bang. Ambadou plays the ball forward, but it's uh, easily cut out. Norwich can bring it forward. Daniel Farker, even at 4-0 up in the 92nd minute, shows his displeasure at the way that possession was turned over so cheaply. Ball goes back to Fasnacht. And now to be worked by McLean through the centre circle. Norwich still looking for the consolation goal. Played down towards Stacey. Furpo's going to be there first. Shepard's the ball out of play for a goal kick. And when Melier takes it, that might well be the last kick of the night. Yeah. We do look at Leeds. Every single person in here of a Leeds persuasion is enjoying themselves and enjoy every single minute. It's exactly what they dreamt of. They didn't believe it had happened. 4 0, completely convincing. Probably. I think that first half will be Leeds' best half of the season, just when they needed it. Leeds United are marching on together. Destination Wembley. Their best ever nights of playoff football. They have dismantled Norwich, beating them by four goals to nil. Off to the perfect start. They never look back. And has this old ground ever seen such a raucous, joyful atmosphere since the days of the First Division title back in 1992 when they were champions of England? What a night for Leeds United. They move on. Norwich simply with one to forget. A terrible night for them. As bad as it's been over the course of the season. No sense of timing to produce such a lacklustre performance. But credit to Leeds, Gruet, Peru, Ruta and Somerville. Milner in the first leg. 4-0 to Leeds tonight. And it was even easier than the scoreline suggests.